2015. America's reluctant ally finally offers token assistance against ISIS only as a cover for campaign against the Kurds. And thank you. Thank you, Philip Giraldi. Tax Wall Street Party was all over this story one month before you. One month. So if you want to wait a month, then you can you can wait for these guys. Otherwise, subscribe to the daily briefing of the Tax Wall Street Party. So here we get a, a kind of a history of uh, of the Turkish uh, characters, right? And we'll be back in just a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Topley here in Washington, D.C. Many developments involving Turkey. This entire thing, Turkey, ISIS, Syria, diplomatically in terms of scandals, um, intelligence fakery by Allen and company, and uh, at least a growing awareness, right? We see this reflected uh, better late than never from Philip Giraldi, how Turkey plays the war on on terror uh, from the start, writes Giraldi, old CIA. Turkey, which nominally opposes radical rebel groups like ISIS and Nusra, has been curiously absent from the fray, instead arguing that the major effort should be focusing on defeating al-Assad. Not quite accurate. Erdogan is the head of ISIS, and the supplies all go through Turkey. So without that help, they'd be nowhere. And he, but he does say, indeed, I, Giraldi, when I was in Istanbul last July, bearded rebels, terrorists, were observed in the more fundamentalist neighborhoods collecting money for ISIS without any interference from the numerous and highly visible Turkish police and intelligence agencies. Turkey has also been surreptitiously buying as much as $3 million worth of smuggled oil from ISIS every day, virtually funding the group's activities. Of course, it's the son of Erdogan who does that stuff. Ankara has allowed ISIS militants to freely cross over the Syrian border for what may be described as r and rest and relaxation, Vietnam-era language, as well as medical care and training. And then Washington was delighted, and we were delighted here too at the beginning, when Turkey on July 23rd said that they would start attacking ISIS. But of course, uh, that's not what it has turned out to be. This is now three or four to uh, to a hundred, uh, th- three or four hundred uh, in terms of who they're targeting. So. Um, We've got a civilian coup, in other words, an auto coup, auto golpe, by uh, by Erdogan. Right, he's cooing himself, and he's going to take power in a in a new and more extreme uh, form. So um, we're also told that there's much rage. Let's remember this: a major air assault on the PKK and other Kurdish targets in Syria, northern Syria, was followed was no warning to American and other allied soldiers and intelligence officers present in that area, a move that outraged U.S. military leaders. That was that Fox report. You heard it here, same day. Um, And uh, we know that the the Erdogan uh, faction line is that Kurds are more dangerous than ISIS. I'm sorry, we don't see it. The atrocities are very much on the side of these crazy uh, ISIS guys. Okay, so he's saying 300 strikes against Turk- Kurdish targets compared to three of ISIS. You get the uh, the idea. So um, one angry American general calls the development a bait and switch. My God, I was on press TV the same day, and I said it's a bait and switch. Go and look on tarpley.net. While another commented that Erdogan needed a hook to go after the Kurds and lied to Washington. So now we have Erdogan, the hooker of the Muslim uh, Brotherhood. So he wants to win this election and set up a dictatorship. Look at all this stuff. It is uh, truly a monstrosity. And again, let's just remember, where does it all lead? This is actually the London Spectator. Sorry about misidentifying. Not the other paper that I said, but the Spectator of London. So here we go. Simon Jenkins, who has written uh, book length stuff about this. Here we go again. The drumbeat for sending troops back to Iraq has begun. If you thought that humanitarian intervention was dead and buried, no such luck. It's taking pride of place in the American 
election. Is it going to happen again? Will the next 12 months really see Western armies return to Iraq? Uh, and again, he's written a book uh, about it. Um, Barack Obama and Cameron have been emphatic, no more boots on foreign soil. But uh, as the months go by, the drip, 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 the neocons, the warmongers, the Samantha Power crew of humanitarian bombers. Uh, so the idea is that in the British circles, which are often decisive, uh, can be for some of these matters, um, Pew and Rasmussen now show U.S. population in favor of ground war against ISIS. It's not necessary. Certainly bomb. No problem with bombing. Don't hesitate to bomb. But the main thing is cut the ISIS supply line. Unleash the Kurds. Arm the Kurds. Give the Kurds what they need to simply close the Turkish-Syrian border. Once those supply lines are cut, ISIS will wither and die. And... Um, that will be uh, the solution. Obviously, some of the units may scatter. Terrorist fighters may attempt to go in different directions. But in terms of an organized military threat, it will be gone. And also remember, ISIS is a ragtag collection of psychotic patsies. They're lunatics. They, they, they have no appeal. Uh, they massacre the populations that they conquer. And then when people, even uh, even the ones that are duped in the beginning, when they realize what ICE is, those guys get caught and executed. And you can find this all over the Internet. How long can London and Washington tolerate weekly ISIS atrocity videos? There is no self-restraint. Nothing has changed since Gladstone was browbeaten into sending Gordon, Chinese Gordon, into disaster at Khartoum, right? Well, uh, Hillary Clinton says, we don't do stupid. And now she says, fill the vacuum. Uh, and again, warmongers on both sides. Trump the warmonger, Hillary the warmonger, Bernie Sanders, dangerously vague, dangerously vague on this stuff. Senator from the F-35. Um, so you get the idea. So this is this is all what Alan wants to, to sum it up by preserving ISIS. Alan thinks he's got a CIA secret army to use against Iran and Russia. These are also insane projects that the American people, I think, would repudiate if they knew the score. The creation of the safe zone one month ago has now led to a safe zone in the sense of a, of a safe haven for terrorists. Exactly as we've said, time to strip away cover for that. Time to let the Syrian Arab Air Force go to work and, and give them some, some assistance in terms of spotting and so forth. But the main thing is force the closure of the Turkish-Syrian border, whether Erdogan wants it or not. Shut it down. Don't let it happen. Because right now it's like a, it's a, it's a uh, corridor to project ISIS terrorist activities deep into the Aleppo area and, and other areas of, of Syria. And remember, you Americans have a special responsibility. You Americans, we have got to get rid of Allen. Hashtag fire Allen for ISIS and do it now. Back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C., Friday, the 28th of August. Now, uh, a couple of other things about Turkey. Now, you'll remember in the course of this past week, and certainly you know everything about it if you got that vital morning briefing from the Tax Wall Street Party, which you can get for free. I don't know what you're waiting for. This is a golden opportunity. It may not go on forever. So get in there now and get your free sub. You'll be grandfathered in, but maybe later on it'll be uh, a different uh, proposition. You'll remember that we had... Um, gotten these reports that the Turkish government had betrayed U.S. military secrets. Top secret U.S. military info was traduced, betrayed by Erdogan and company, the MIT intelligence agency that serves him, that when the U.S. was going to put in this pathetic Division 30, I'm sorry, Platoon 30 of 65 democratically minded terrorist rebels, uh, when they were introduced into Turkey, 
the uh, I'm sorry, from Turkey to Saudi Arabia to um, to Syria, that the Turkish government, the MIT, told Nusra and ISIS that they were coming so that these characters were all rounded up, some of them killed, but mainly captured, and that they've now gone over to uh, to some uh, posture of cooperating with Nusra and the rest of the brothers, as they call them. Um, so normally that stuff would not be answered. But this past week, the Turkish foreign ministry felt obliged to pay attention to that and to deny it, right? That it's simply uh, a fantastic invention uh, or whatever else they said. Now, the other thing you have to remember is that um, the question of the Iran nuclear accord is in the background because that's a, another uh, high level issue. Uh, if the U.S. develops a normal relation with Iran, then the neo-Ottoman clique of madmen, in particular Erdogan and Davutoglu in uh, Ankara, in Istanbul, they feel that that is a humiliation for them, that they will be nowhere. They'll be out in left field. They're going to have no, no importance, no role. Right? They've got to be indispensable. And if the U.S., can uh, normalize with Iran. They won't be. So remember, one of the other things that's going on here is the attempt to torpedo the Iran nuclear accord. And we're, we're told even the Israelis are getting into the act. In other words, we got reports from, uh, or at least allegations, from the uh, Sy Syrian and Iranian media that one of the reasons Netanyahu has been so eager to bomb Syria in the past couple of, uh, of uh, weeks is he, on the one hand, he thinks this is a way to divert Syrian power away from dealing with the ISIS in this in these northern areas, right, where the ISIS are strung out, right? If we could get we could get a pincers, we could have the Kurds and the Syrian Arab army, and then ISIS would be in grave difficulty. But the other thing that Netanyahu is trying to avoid, he's trying to save ISIS clearly, and one of the things he's got in mind is to inflame opinion among the American Jewish community and try to convince them to say, look, Syria bad, Hezbollah bad, Iran bad, no treaty, be opposed to it. Doesn't look like it's working. Um, and indeed, our friends on National Public Radio, the Diane Rehm show this morning are saying that the whip count suggests that Obama may indeed have the votes. Uh, and not even to to uh, prevent his veto from being overridden, given the fact that in the Senate you've got to have 60 votes to go further on any legislative business, it's quite possible, according to these presumably informed sources, that in the Senate especially, the warmonger faction – the anti-Obama group in this case, will not have the 60 votes they need to get the the uh, the repudiation of the deal. In other words, they want to pass a bill saying the Senate is opposed to this uh, sellout to Iran, blah, blah, blah. They may not even get the 60. So in other words, this whole warmonger operation may uh, fail in the first round, not even when it comes back with a veto on it and they've got to try to override the veto, right? The, the, uh, the simple 60 votes to impose cloture and, uh, and bring something to the floor, they may not even have that. So when Alan looks at that, he says, oh my God, that's one of my main points of blackmail on Obama. And if that goes through, what will the world be coming to? Now you have also strange, uh, bedfellows here. Uh, I have a, an article here from The Nation, James Carden, uh, and he's noting the fact that the New York Times seems to be out to destroy the Iran nuclear accord. Headline, why would the New York Times try to torpedo the Iran deal? Today's front page piece masquerades as new as news analysis while pushing a neoconservative agenda. August 24th from Carden. Now, look. Uh, let's let's get the facts. Uh, today, the New York Times ran a piece by two of their golden boys, David E. Sanger, S-A-N-G-E-R, and Michael R. Gordon, calling attention 
to the alleged weaknesses in the Obama administration's K-9 